Hi, my name is Pete Tomlinson, and I chose to do a case study on a man named Shane McGowan, who is a Irish musician. He was born in England in 1957 to Irish parents. He was raised in Ireland by his mother's relatives while his parents continued to work in England on a family farm. Uh, due to the rural setting and the Christian traditions that they had, they would have beers every night. So by the age of four, he had already been introduced to alcohol, and uh, by the age of five, he was a admitted alcoholic. Um, this admission comes in his book, A Drink with Shane McGowan, which is a interview-style biography, autobiography by him and his longtime girlfriend, uh, Victoria Mary Clark. And uh, in this book, he talks about uh, even by the age of four, he had already started to build up a tolerance to alcohol to where he could drink two or three beers a night and he would not feel the effects. Um, he later became introduced to whiskey by age 10 by his uncle who promised him whiskey in return for uh, just basically staying out of his way. Uh, he was also introduced by cigarettes by other uncles for the same reasons. So he was pretty much left to his own accord with uh, alcohol and cigarettes at a very young age. Uh, by the time he was a teen, he had already become addicted to marijuana, and this resulted in him being expelled from several schools and also legal problems. He was arrested several times for possession of marijuana or uh, smoking it in public or uh, stealing, being caught with stolen goods, those sort of things. Um, and this only progressed further on. Later on in his teens, he became addicted to heroin, um, LSD, Valium, and uh, occasionally he would use cocaine. Uh, by the time he was 17, he had decided to commit himself to a mental state health institution hospital for his addictions to, uh, in order to get around the court order to go for uh, pending drug charges because he knew that if he had committed himself before the court ordered him to go, then he would be able to get out a lot faster and thus get back to his uh, drug lifestyle. Uh, in his book, A Drink with Shane McGowan, he attributes some of his uh, teenage years of drug use and alcohol use to uh, his parents. His father was a violent alcoholic and his mother became addicted to pills while he was still young. Uh, so he used it as a form of escape, he says. Um, and then after he got out of the state health hospital right before he turned 18, uh, he once again turned back to the drugs and alcohol, specifically heroin. And uh, since he had such a drug problem, he obviously wasn't able to hold down a job. He would go through several and get fired. Uh, he began uh, more interested in music and began to focus on that. And uh, that kind of profession allows for the use of drugs and alcohol, so it only um, amplified the problems for him to where he would uh, be routinely kicked out of bands for his behavior or for his uh, prob drug problems or alcohol use. Uh, he would even not be allowed into shows. He would show up where the venue and the uh, organizers would think he was a drunk band, so they wouldn't even allow him in, which would cause more problems for the band. band. Um, based upon the DSM, the criteria for substance abuse, his failure to fulfill major role obligations is easily seen both in his failure to get to school, um, his failure to hold down a job, and then even his failure to work for the bands that he was in. Um, another criteria is that it becomes physically dangerous for the person to use the substance. Um, this could be seen with the alcohol. He would get so drunk that he would be a stumbling drunk to where he would fall off the stage and hurt himself, or he would just be uh, falling around his apartment, you know, running into things, hurting himself that way. Uh, obviously, the legal problems that he ran into all through his teenage years and well into adulthood, through the uh, being arrested several times, and then, uh, as he claimed in his book, just being harassed by the local police. Um, 
he was charged several times, not only with possession, but when the police would raid his house, they would charge him with uh, possession of stolen property, even if it wasn't, they would just assume that it was. And then the fourth criteria that he met for abuse of alcohol and drugs would be the uh, continued use despite the known problems. He continued to use the alcohol and drugs even though he knew that they caused him these problems. Uh, as far as the dependence goes, um, McGowan definitely showed dependence more so for alcohol and heroin than he did the other drugs. Uh, the obvious one is his buildup of the tolerance to both alcohol and heroin over the years. Um, he also suffered from withdrawal symptoms with heroin, and uh, he claims in his book the only thing he really felt as far as withdrawal symptoms go in regards to alcohol would be the anxiety of not being able to use it, and then later on, um, he also claimed he had anxiety from the his stay in the hospital because he was always with somebody, so then once he was left alone, he became more anxious, which then in turn caused him to drink more alcohol in a comfort fashion. Um, the third form of dependence that is shown that he would take more than he in intended. He would routinely say he was only going to have a drink or two before a show and then end up uh, becoming very drunk by the time the show is supposed to start. Uh, another criteria that ties in to the legal problems is that he would give up other things in order to maintain his addiction. He uh, gave up his schooling. Uh, he gave up jobs. Um, he routinely had relationship problems with his girlfriend. And then the last one that also ties into the previous is his continued use despite the knowledge that it's bad. He knew it was bad and he knew that it was causing other problems in his life, yet he continued to use it. Um, as far as his symptoms go for uh, the alcohol use, he obviously built up a tolerance to where, as he said in his book, he could drink an entire bottle of wine without even feeling the effects. Um, so he would drink very large amounts. Uh, he couldn't control his intake of the alcohol. He would just drink and drink and drink. Um, for his heroin use, it was also similar. He built up a tolerance to it, uh, to where he was using it a lot. He couldn't control himself. And this also got him into legal problems to where he was stealing to support his habit. Uh, he was selling his own goods, his family's um, items without their knowledge in order to fund his heroin addiction. For uh, his marijuana use, uh, it really only seemed to create legal problems. Uh, he claimed that was more of a recreational uh, type use. Uh, so it just caused the legal problems of being caught with it and arrested at a young age. Uh, LSD had, they also also had the legal problems where he was kicked out of school for being caught in possession with it. Um, and then in his book he claimed that he had bad experiences with the LSD, he would have bad trips where he'd have hallucinations, uh, anxiety problems, and those sort of things, but he continued to use it despite knowing this.